Did you know that China is undertaking an ambitious endeavor to defy nature itself? They're in the process of constructing the world's largest water diversion project, involving thousands of kilometers of artificial canals, aqueducts, and tunnels that traverse literal mountains. The goal is to transport fresh water from the south to the dry industrial centers in the north of the country. In this video, we'll explore China's controversial South to North Water Diversion Project, delving into its cost, motivations, environmental impact, and its potential benefits or drawbacks for the Chinese population. China's Difficult Geography China's geography has both blessed and challenged the country for centuries. In the eastern part of China, thanks to rivers like the Yangtze and Yellow River, people have lived for a long time. The fertile land there has supported a growing population. In fact, the Yellow River Valley is one of the biggest areas for farming in the world. However, in the northern and far western parts of China, the land is dry and mountainous. Deserts like the Taklamakan and Gobi are found in the north, while the Himalayas and Tibetan Plateau create tough landscapes. These areas are not suitable for many people to live or for farming. In fact, 94% of China's population lives to the east of an imaginary line that separates the country. Historically, the northern cities, including Beijing, have been important for people, farming, and trade. But in the 20th century, as China's population and wealth grew, there was a problem with getting enough water in the north. Cities like Beijing depended on underground water, but with more people and industries, this water source got used up. Also, the nearby Gobi Desert in Inner Mongolia kept expanding, causing dust and sandstorms. Large areas of grasslands were turning into desert, mostly because of human activities like cutting down trees, changes in climate, and using too much underground water. By the 1950s, it was clear that northern China wouldn't have enough water for its growing population. The cities were getting bigger, but the water was getting scarcer. China had to figure out a way to provide water to hundreds of millions of people in a historically dry area. To solve this water problem, Mao Zedong, China's founding leader, came up with a plan. The South North Water Meta Project. In 1952, the People's Republic of China suggested a simple idea, moving water from the wet southern part of the country to the dry northern areas. They thought, there's a lot of water in the south, but not much in the north. Maybe we can share some. It took 50 years for this idea to get the green light from the government in 2002. The big plan was officially named the South North Water Transfer Project. It aimed to build a series of connected channels, tunnels, reservoirs, and dams to move fresh water from the water-rich south to the water-poor north. The project had three major canal systems, known as the Eastern, Central, and Western routes. The Eastern route started near Yangzhou City, using a branch of the Yangtze River. The Eastern route. A big old pumping station does the job of moving water from the Yangtze River to the Jinghang Grand Canal. This canal is the world's longest artificial waterway that people have fully built. The water then travels through an underground tunnel to cross the Yellow River. After that, a set of channels carries the water to the coastal city of Tianjin, which is near Beijing. The whole journey on the eastern route of the project is more than 1,100 kilometers long. They started building this part in 2002 and hoped to have fresh water flowing by 2013. But because of various delays in construction, it actually took more than four years longer. By 2017, fresh water finally reached Tianjin, providing about 1 billion cubic meters of water each year. This water directly helps around 10 million people in the city. The central route. The central route of this huge project was more challenging because it didn't have existing infrastructure to use. It all started at the Danjanku Reservoir. To make the water flow easily northward, they had to raise the Danjanku Dam by about 15 meters. This made the water level in the reservoir high enough for it to move through canals and channels without needing pumps. But because of this change, more than 300,000 people from Hubei and Henan had to leave their homes to make room for the canals and the bigger reservoir. The rest of the central route consists of man-made canals and channels that create a kind of water highway across the Chinese central plain. One interesting part is the Shai Aqueduct, which stretches over the Shei River for more than 12 kilometers. The journey ends in Beijing, the capital of China. They finished building the central route in 2014 and it's more than 1,200 kilometers long. 
After it was done, about one-third of the water that used to flow through the Han River was redirected. This caused problems for the millions of people who relied on the Han for freshwater. The Western Route The Western Route of China's South North Water Transfer Project is still in the planning stage, and out of the three routes, it's the most difficult to build. The idea for the Western Route is to make a series of waterways and tunnels that connect the Yangtze River to the Yellow River, going through the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, which is very high above sea level, around 3 to 5 kilometers. The land's shape and its weather make this project super tough. Plus, to make the Western Road happen, engineers would have to literally cut through mountains to deal with the challenging terrain. They expect to finish the Western Road by 2050. When it's done, it could bring about 17 cubic kilometers of freshwater each year to northern Chinese provinces. This could help almost 100 million people who live along its path. In the past, there were unofficial plans to use the Western Route to take water from rivers like the Brahmaputra and Mekong, which start in China and flow through India and Southeast Asia. Although this was never the official plan for the project, India got worried that China might mess with the Brahmaputra's water flow. This was a concern for the Indian government. Effects on Chinese people The South North Water Transfer Project is a big success for the Chinese government, even though it's not finished yet. Chinese state media says it's helping about 140 million people in places where there's not enough water. But different Chinese local and provincial governments don't all agree on the project. Some places in the south, like Sichuan and Hubei, don't like the idea of sending water from the Yangtze River up north. They think building the western route of the project would hurt their water supply and hydropower. But in western provinces like Gansu and Qinghai, they believe that the Western Route could bring much-needed stability to their areas, helping with jobs and farming. Even though the project might be working for some, not everyone is on the same page. Effects on the Environment The South North Water Transfer Project might help some cities in the north of China, but it's causing concern among local and global environmentalists. The whole project consists of man-made water routes that don't follow the natural way Chinese rivers flow, which goes from west to east. Because of this, many natural rivers have been affected by the construction of these canals, and some have even dried up because their natural path was changed. As a result, 600 rivers have disappeared during the project's construction. Furthermore, pollution from factories and sewage has ended up in these artificial rivers. For example, on the central route starting at the Danjanku Reservoir, industrial cities like Xi'an dump their waste into the Han River, which then flows into the reservoir, and further along the central route to Beijing. Since many cities and villages are connected to these artificial rivers, people, businesses, and industries often dump their waste in them. The problem is worsened by the lack of water treatment facilities along the project's path. When the project's central route started, it reduced the natural flow of the Yangtze River by as much as 36%. Experts were worried that this could cause saltwater from the Yellow Sea to flow back into local water supplies for coastal Chinese cities like Shanghai and Nantong. If the flow of the Yangtze keeps decreasing as more water is diverted into these artificial rivers, saltwater from the Yellow Sea might even reach the canals themselves. This could lead to a major water crisis across the entire country. There's another environmental concern related to the Western Route. The official plan involves making tunnels in a very mountainous area of China. This construction could potentially cause landslides and harm the local plants and animals. Additionally, the Qinghai Tibet Plateau is a place where earthquakes happen. Building such a big project like the South North Water Transfer Project, there could cost the Chinese government billions of dollars if a major earthquake occurred in the region. Today, the project continues to face environmental challenges. Is the project successful? The South North Water Transfer Project has finished two out of its three planned routes. However, building this project has been very costly for the Chinese government and the Chinese people, both financially and in other ways. The entire project is estimated to cost about $62 billion USD, and that doesn't even include the billions of dollars needed to maintain over 3,000 kilometers of canals, aqueducts, dams, tunnels, and reservoirs. Despite the high financial cost, the project still hasn't completely achieved its original goal of providing clean water to China's north. What do you think about the South North Water Transfer Project? Do you believe the benefits of the project are worth the environmental costs? 
Should they still go ahead with the Western route? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to learn more about similar large projects, you can watch our video on the biggest mega projects in the world. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.